Hello, television viewers. I'm Nick. Last week, with the premiere of Catching Kelsey, E's new dating competition show, we watched it set sail like a majestic ocean liner on its maiden voyage. Now, with its second episode, the SS Kelsey is starting to look more like a poorly captained, barnacle-encrusted Italian cruise ship. So grab a life vest and pull up a deck chair. Get the party started. This is gonna be a good one. The episode starts with Travis throwing a barbecue at the mansion in order to get to know the girls better, but he doesn't come alone. I invited my brother Jason and my manager Aaron so that I can get their opinion on these girls. Yeah, Jason, Aaron, you need their opinions. We get it, Travis. If you have to explain their role on the show every time they show up on screen, then they're not that important. Throughout the barbecue, the girls struggle to get their alone time with Travis, and Maya makes it clear that she's not here to make any friends. I just see myself as team me, and I feel like I have to be confident and secure in this relationship. So like, how does it go to have girls always swoon over you? Not at all. Travis denies that girls swoon over him when he's literally surrounded by girls. Anika looks like she's about to break her neck trying to be included in the conversation, and Maya is about to smash that glass into Lolo's head if she leans in any further. If you recall, Victoria from Rhode Island kissed Travis during last week's elimination, and she's still feeling pretty smug about that at this point. The kiss was a bold move. He currently only has that physical connection with me, so I think that puts me in a pretty good place. So you were the first person to kiss Travis, Victoria, but it was the first episode, so you're not gonna be the last. It's like if you were the first person to use the porta potty at a music festival. Circle back in a few hours, you'll know others have been there. Man, oh man, oh man, I don't know what I'm gonna do, guys. Did you have fun at the barbecue? Ugh. These meetings that Travis has with his bros of the round table are always pointless. But for some reason, Catching Kelsey is determined to have hour-long episodes. I edit each of these down to 10 minutes or less, and 70% of that is me making bitchy comments. Travis selects Maya as his choice for the group date, so she gets to pick which five girls are coming with her. Me and Maya are roommates and best friends, and she better take me. Lexi seems like that girl from high school who uses the term best friend to guilt you into bringing her on your family's vacation. That's such a good strategy. Only then when she uploads all the pictures to MySpace, you've been cropped out of every single one. That never happened to me. I'm not bitter. Lexi does get to go on the group date with Maya as her one and only ally. Maya also brings Jenny, Missouri, New Jersey, and Lolo. Yay! Thank you. I don't really have to explain myself, but I feel like saying this is a disclaimer. Some of these girls I picked because I don't feel like you should be here. You're basic and you're boring. All right, well, thank you anyway. Points to Maya for coming up with this devious strategy, but now that you've announced your plan to the whole room, not only do these girls get to go on the date, but they also get to go without having any loyalties to you. They'll be like, Dr. Evil over here can go f herself. Even if she thinks I'm boring, there is no such thing as bad screen time. Anika is concerned that since she's not going on the date, she won't get enough attention from Travis, or maybe just not enough attention in general. In either case, she breaks out the mechanical pencil, and like a discount Jane Austen attempts to write a heartfelt note to Travis, explaining that she hopes to get to know him better. To ensure that my message would get to Travis, I talked to Jenny and I asked her if she will give this note to him. I have had my eye on you, Jenny from Oregon, always sitting politely next to somebody or smiling nicely in the background. She just seems too good, too pure for this world. The kind of girl that Drake writes songs about. That's why I'm a little nervous that Anika is dragging her into this plan. The girls are taken to 24 hour fitness where Travis tells them what their date will be. I got booked for a commercial shoot and you all will be in the video with me. Oh my God. I'm pretending to be excited and I'm really not. My whole strategy was to pick girls that wouldn't outshine me and Lauren owns a freaking gym, Lolo is a personal trainer, and Veronica's really into fitness. This could backfire big time. Ah uh, yes, for although their interest in fitness makes them basic, it will also be the source of their strength. And that is a quote directly from the Old Testament which is the ironic title I've given my ninth grade notebook full of very gay proverbs. Over the course of a minute, this shoot goes from being for a commercial to an exercise video to something that they play in 24 hour fitnesses. The woman who they have explained it is so irrelevant that they literally don't even bother putting her name on the screen. You were going to take them, I believe? Yeah, we're gonna head over to hair and makeup and give you the royal treatment. Yes, thank you. Woo! We all already have makeup on, but sure, let's pretend this is America's Next Top Model for a second. Travis jumps out and pretends to be Richard Simmons briefly, which seems like a total afterthought. Hey ladies, what? who wants to dance? <laughs> oh sh! Did Travis do or say anything interesting in this episode yet? We can throw some sort of costume together, that will be enough, right? 
The girls go on to shoot this so-called exercise video, which will probably never see the light of day, and Travis pulls some people aside to have some one-on-one -on -one time. Lolo takes this opportunity to ask some very loaded questions. I have a lot of deal breakers. Do you like group fitness? Cardio or weights? Do you do the elliptical? No, I don't okay, do elliptical. Okay, good. The That's elliptical. like a major deal breaker. Yeah. The problem is, is I actually do love the elliptical. What? Looks like you two disagree on some pretty boring topics. Lauren from Missouri gets to play one-on-one -on -one with Travis. That's a type of basketball. And then they kiss. Oh my god! <laughs> Are you serious? I'm pissed. That's disrespectful. You know, this is supposed to be my day. You're even lucky that I brought you. That's just rude. You mean rude like openly calling the girls you invited bland, basic bitches? I feel like you should have seen this coming. The beautiful, amazing, and caring Jenny gets to spend time with Travis, although it seems like the only thing she's able to accomplish is to give Anika's letter to him. The letter goes a little something like this. I feel surrounded by the howling mad hyenas in this demented animal asylum. You get the idea. Maya is then further angered by Anika's letter. So Anika gave Jenny a letter to give to Travis on my date. So at this point, I'm really annoyed. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm not gonna shoot the messenger. Oh, you're not gonna shoot me? Thanks, mister. Once the girls are all back at the house, Maya lashes out at Anika for having Jenny deliver that letter. It's very Shakespearean. Yeah. Jenny almost yeah. got beat up today because of you. It's a shame that you have to be that desperate and you have to go so long I'm to write thirsty. a letter. My I'm thirsty, my I'm not talking to you, I'm not done talking. I'm, I'm not know you're done not talking. talking. I let you talk, so let me talk. I don't like need to let you let anyway, me talk. Anyway, she's irrelevant. Talk, I... Maya is yelling, Anika is deflecting with humor, and all of these taco fillings are going cold. But throughout this whole thing, all I can do is worry about Jenny, who seems completely uninterested in being involved with this fight. Jenny, what happened? What? You're tired? I didn't think the reaction in the house was gonna be this crazy. It gets heated super quick, and I, I need to step out of this right now. In every reality show, there is one contestant who struggles to avoid conflict in a house ruled by narcissistic personality disorders. For Catching Kelsey, that person is Oregon's Jenny. She just wants to put on her sleep mask and go to bed, but the nightmare continues with nighttime apologies and air horn honking. Use the hashtag LeaveJennyAlone to raise awareness for this delicate flower who found herself unwittingly in a desperate situation. This message is sponsored by Nicholas Duramio and the Leave Jenny Alone campaign. For New Jersey, Veronica's date, Travis takes her out to dinner. What's the dream job? I love decorating cakes. Like, I kind of like jumped into it and I felt like I should have worked on it with someone. Some people call me Veronica, and then some people call me Ronnie, some people call me V-Ron. Talks a mile a minute, and it's about five or six different conversations within 10 seconds. And when those electric scooters came in, you know, like. <laughs> this is clearly edited to make it look like Veronica is talking a lot. She's actually speaking the normal amount for someone who's on a date with a person she barely knows. How is it her fault that Travis is socially inept and gives her a full-on glass centerpiece with a card that has an Adam Sandler quote? Veronica, so hot. Want to touch the honey. Love, Travis. At the elimination, Jenny is asked to leave, which is fine because she's too good for him. Jenny actually seems okay with leaving and she doesn't think it's because she gave Travis the letter, while Anika is off to the side trying her very hardest to look like she's crying. Just before being eliminated, Lolo makes a quick attempt at coining a catchphrase for herself. I'm not with them two, I'm not with them two. So I just have a simple question. Do you want the treat or the tricks? I just came up with that right now. And I'm just spitballing here, but maybe that's the title of my spin-off reality show where I ask men escalatingly boring questions about their exercise routines. Huh? The last girl to go is Jessica from Nevada. Although I had an unfavorable opinion of Jessica based on the casting special, during the last two episodes she's actually been very classy and composed, which to be honest is why she had to go. So V. Rich and Jamie Lee are left to stay. Jamie Lee, this lip color is working for you. I like what I see. V. Rich, I'm glad you're still here because I like the way you talk. Attention whore, you're acting like a moron. What did you think of episode two? Is Travis boring anybody else? Let me know in the comments below and click that thumbs up button for even more clip breakdowns for catching Kelsey. Also click that subscribe button right down there so that you never miss another video from me. Pop culture commentary every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thanks so much for watching and a special thanks to all of the girls of Catching Kelsey for being such good sports. I will see you next time.